Hello and welcome back to my Trans America Trail Adventure Across America series. In part six, I made the journey from Yellowstone National Park to the western border of Wyoming to reconnect with the Tad. This section of the trail completely blew me away with its diverse landscape ranging from lush green forests with an abundance of water and wildlife to some of the most desolate deserts I had encountered on my whole trip. I thoroughly enjoyed the state and was ready to begin my journey through Colorado. I packed up camp alongside the reservoir and hopped back on the road to reconnect with the Tat. I was happy to be back in the mountains where the weather was cool and all the scenery was lush green. I will say these sections of the trail proved to be difficult with the near constant cow encounters and rugged terrain. A few times I found myself on some very steep trails that proved to be somewhat of a challenge on my loaded down bike, but I was still having a great time. The trail took me into some cool valleys and some high cliffs. I decided to take a riding break and send up the drone to show just how spectacular these views were in the mountain ranges of Colorado. Even this footage doesn't do it any justice. Near the top of the mountain, my phone mount decided to spontaneously combust, which was undoubtedly a huge annoyance leaving me attempting to follow the trail blind. After half a day of riding, I ended up in the cool little town of Crested Butte, a small ski town with all sorts of neat things to see. I ate some bomb pizza at the secret stash and hopped back on the trail to find camp. I knew that there were campsites within 60 miles, only I didn't realize that the campsites were on the other side of a 13,000 foot pass on a dirt road. What I thought would only take an hour or two ended up taking nearly four hours. But this was partially my fault as there was just too much cool stuff to stop and take videos of. These high altitude creeks and rivers look so pristine and amazing, I just couldn't help but bust out the camera. I finally made it to camp and was overjoyed to find such an amazing sight. I set up camp, ate some dinner, and got to work attempting to fix my broken phone mount. I was a little worried as there was a wild storm scheduled to hit the next day and I needed to go over one of the hardest sections of the tat, 10 Cut Pass. The next morning I was on the road bright and early, and within an hour I was in 10 Cup in hopes to grab a quick breakfast. Unfortunately everything was still closed so I decided to continue onwards to 10 Cut Pass in order to beat the storm. I was running on a few hours of sleep and an empty stomach, which did not seem like much of a big deal at first because the first section of 10 Cut Pass was cake, nothing that I hadn't encountered along my journey. I arrived at Mirror Lake and took a second to enjoy the calmness of this hidden gym. I hopped on the trail and realized almost immediately that the difficulty went from a 3 to a 7 in a matter of seconds, as these loose rocks were almost impossible to ride on. What happened next was both terrifying and hilarious. I somehow managed to bonk a rock at the perfect angle, knocking me off balance, resulting in laying down the bike and getting launched into the lake. The water was absolutely freezing and my wrist turned purple in seconds. Adrenaline was pumping as I attempted to upright my bike and do some damage control. I spent the next 10 minutes trying to restart my bike, which proved to be a huge problem at 14,000 feet. Once I got the bike started, I continued on my way, but I'll admit my confidence was shattered and my wrist was feeling worse by the minute. I was able to finish out the lake section and continue onwards towards the top of the pass. To my dismay, the trail only became steeper and more difficult, as I found myself going up sheer cliffs on very rocky terrain. I learned very quickly that this trail was not designed for a bike completely loaded down with gear and a soaking wet sleep deprived rider with a bum wrist. I was getting stuck on a constant basis and burning up my clutch attempting to dislodge the bike. Eventually I made the decision to turn back around. This trail had defeated me. I limped my bike back to 10 cup with my tail between my legs. I pulled out my phone and I planned a different route around the pass. What I didn't know was that this route was actually steeper and more treacherous than the pass. I often found myself on the side of a mountain traversing some wild terrain with the thunder booming in the distance. I was officially in a pickle as a storm caught up to me as I scrambled to find a place to set up camp. My GoPro died while I was in the middle of the forest in one of the wildest storms I'd ever been in. But I can tell you right now that watching lightning strike trees in the distance made me question what I was doing in the middle of nowhere, injured and alone. I arrived at a campsite soaked to the bone and set up my tent in the mud. I crawled in the tent, a defeated man wanting nothing more than to throw in the towel on this trip. I took a four hour nap and to my surprise woke up reinvigorated and re-inspired. The good news is I had hit rock bottom, so that meant I could only go up from there. I got creative and used my MSR pocket rocket to get a fire going despite everything being completely drenched. I used this fire to cook a real meal and dry off my soaking wet gear. It's not the good times that shape who we are. 
but rather how we respond during the bad times. Many instances along my trip I felt foolish and scared, but I continually pushed onward in my quest to complete the Trans-America Trail. Thank you so much for watching part 7 of my Trans-America Trail Adventure Across America series. In part 8, I battle my way through the wild storms of Colorado and meet some amazing people along the way. See you there, friend!